you know what I'm going to talk about next. Mara. Monthly chart for Mara. Right off the bat, you know, you, you have a lot of, you know, these kind of consolidation over here. But if you look at the macro um, waves, if you will, it is still forming very much of an up upward channel over here. Overall it is to higher highs and higher lows overall, right? You can debate whether or not there's some, you know, lower lows and things like that is happening over here. But overall, it just looks like a channel kind of going up, right? The, um, the key here is that it's been consolidating for quite some time. And it also is trying to hook this, you know, ticket and kitchen around here for quite some time. And I, I've said this over and over again. Like if you watch my video again, I, I'm just going to say it again. I think this area over here looks like this area over here. We have a bullish cross. Price could be underneath both the tank and the kitchen. I don't care. Um, but eventually, whenever it's done kind of back testing things, it needs to back test. Whenever the volume, the sudden volume is starting to like really get exhausted, um, whenever the true buying volume comes in, it could go and touch the cloud. It can push through the cloud too. I mean, I, I do. I don't think it's going to push through right away. I do think that there's a lot of you know volume shelf resistance right around here. That it needs to push through around the you know around the low 30s, and once it get up to the cloud, maybe 40, you might have a little bit of stalling over here because you have. Overall, I think the channeling is going up. And I think that whenever this consolidation is done, it's probably going to do pretty well. All right, water time. <clears throat> Sorry. So that's kind of what I'm seeing. I'm going to look at the two week here. You know, two week here is basically showing you this too. And it's also very interesting in terms of what I'm seeing. Basically, it kind of breaks inside a cloud over here on the two-week chart. Kind of like how it broke inside a cloud over here, right? On pretty decent volume. And it's just kind of going around the cloud, trying to figure out this thing. But the next true move, usually once you break into the Ichimoku cloud, and this is true for a lot of altcoins a few months ago, once you break inside the Ichimoku cloud, it tends to want to test out the other side, you know, and the Ichimoku cloud on the two weeks, just like the monthly is around like 42, 43. It's potential for some initial rejection that you see with the price history over here. But I, I think that it might end up, you know, going up higher from this. I, I'm still bullish on it um, because I'm still seeing a longer term bull trend. How do I know it's a longer term bull trend? Well, you pull up the moving averages, you can, double check on it, see whether or not it's a bull trend. So going back to the weekly, all it's doing right now is that 50 is rising and it's just back testing 50 multiple times. I like the fact that you have these kind of wicks underneath, you know, usually these are a little bit more trees or kind of looking thing. It's uh, generally more favorable in price to kind of go up higher, right? Could price end up closing the gap down here? At, uh, where's the gap at like 13.7? Possible doesn't look like it wants to. 50 moving averages pointing up and starting a support 20 over 50 over 100. This is a bull trend. It's just started not long ago. So yeah, it's too favorable. If if you look at the weekly, you can see closely in, you know, in terms of what the volume is doing. Buy volume up, sell volume down, right? And it looks like there's a lot of kind of like these selling seller exhaustion over here. Um it's, it's looking pretty decent. You have a very nice kind of hammer bottom over here two weeks ago. And looks like it's kind of playing out, but it might take some time because you're still stuck at this, you know, big giant volume shelf here. Probably just been balancing between these two volume shelves over here for quite some time. So I, yeah, I mean, eventually people are going to buy the bottom range and it's going to go up higher. That's kind of how these things work. Um, in terms of how much higher, Hmm, that's a good question. I generally like to use Fibonacci level as a guide in terms of price target. Again, nothing's ever guaranteed, right? There are people who says that you cannot take a look at the left-hand side and predict what price is on the right. But that's actually kind of what technical analysis is. You're trying to use the available information to you to try to figure out what price is going to go moving forward. 
that's literally what you know what it is. And if you literally look at the Fibonacci level for Mara, it actually fits the Fibonacci level rejection and support very, very well. It's just been bouncing up and down between like the 0 0.382 and the 0 0.136 almost perfectly. It's been range bound for months. What happened when you have the bottom of the range is probably going to go up to the top of the range. What happens when you have the top of the range and you have seller exhaustion is going to go up higher. If you're able to break through all these resistance. Now, again, I was talking about the top of each and move cloud. It's like 42, right? 42, 43. That's the 0 0.5 Fibonacci level over there. That's going to be the next level. After that's the golden ratio, 53.3. If it breaks all time high, which is this wick up here around 84, there's, you know, depending on what Bitcoin does, depending on what Adepigram does, depending on what liquidity does, depending on how irrational the bull market end up being, you could potentially hit some of the upper, upper targets over here, like 134, 215. It's not impossible. I wouldn't count on it. But did you also thought that 34 was possible when the price was at $3? Did you think that 80 five dollars was possible when its price was down at like 35 cents it, it, it can get pretty rational marathon has a small market cap like a few billion dollars it doesn't take a whole lot of money to pump it up and if you're wondering what the whales are doing i mean granted institutions 42 percent in you know institutional ownership which is not bad and if you look at the accumulation chart, it's just been going up and up, right? I mean, a lot of this could potentially be just absorbing the dilution, and the dilution can still kind of weighing in price in a little bit. But I do think that this is actually probably more technical than anything. It's just been zigzagging between these two levels, building on a lot of energy, shaking up weekends. All the all y'all who start following me. When price went from like eight dollars all the way up to like thirty, all of you started following me. Needed to be tested. I I I, I cannot tell you whether or not to stay in or or not. All I can tell you is I see a bull trend and I'm in. That's all I can say. But um, I, I really don't care about what happened over the last few months. Matter of fact, I. I thought like Q1 was going to be like a buying opportunity. I made a whole post about, you know, miners being that I didn't know that it was going to extend out to all the way to April. But I did expect, you know, like seasonality weakness over here at this range over here um, from like January to March end up being extended to April, which is okay. You know, seasonality for April is generally weak too, unfortunately. But this over here looks just like this over here in terms of a lot of different things that I'm seeing. I've shown you this before, right? The well fund flow, right? The well fund flow, price sideways, wells coming in, price sideways, wells coming in, right? Bull in Japan, flattening, going up, flattening, going up, right? It's crawling under the upper bull in Japan over here, it's crawling under the upper bull in Japan over here, putting a lot of energy before going up, right? And I already showed you the Ichimoku cloud. Bullish cross, bullish cross. Building up a lot of energy, potentially push up a lot higher. I, nothing has changed. I, I don't care what it does like Monday. Um, I think BitFarm is in a very similar kind of pattern. It actually looks very, very similar um, to Mara. Sometimes it's stronger, sometimes it's weaker. When it pushed higher, it pushed higher than Mara. When it corrects, it corrects harder than Mara. Sometimes it's, it's smaller market cap, so what do you expect, right? And um, if you look at the Fibonacci levels, roughly what it's trying to do, I can tell you this, roughly what it's trying to do is basically the same thing that Mara is doing. Bounce on the 0 0.382. Got rejected here. Big volume shelf over here, right? a lot of history around here around like four dollars got rejected over here came back down trying to trying to bounce off support over here there's a little bit of like a you know inver inverted cup and hand no, sorry not cup and hand um inverse um hand shoulder pattern over here breakout reaches target 
back testing the, um, the the neckline, right? So balance from the Fibonacci level, getting back to the neckline, consolidating around here for a little while, but it's basically this range balance between you know these two Fibonacci levels. Like this is not anything that should like surprise you or scare you. Buy volume up, sell volume down, not a bad look. And if you look at the Ichimoku cloud, you have the you have the bullish cross up here, just like what Mara is doing. Like there's no difference really, except price is a little bit lower um, underneath the um, the Tenkan and Kijin. And uh, again, like the top of the cloud is around like probably like four or five dollars up here. If it ends up breaking out about this range, there's this is still a range though, right? Two big giant volume shelves over here, bouncy balls around here for quite some time. It was able to break above this range convincingly with some volume coming in, it can hit like four or five, like I think it could hit like $5 in a hurry potentially. Probably gonna end up getting resistance there though because you know you have history here. But uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at currently. Looking at the um, Bullet Japan, favorable, right? Looks like a nice little flag over here. 20 month movement just crawling up. It's uh, it, it's it's not a bad look. Like it really isn't a bad look. It looks it's just like Mara, but it just looks a little bit more impulsive on the way up, a little bit more impulsive on the way down, and it's finding support where you think you would find support at. Um, I still find this to be a favorable chart. Now, it's it's weaker on the way down, and I'll show you what I meant by that. Like if you look at the weekly chart, if you pull up the weekly moving averages. Like it's finding support in the 50, but it's not as like, you know, nice as Mara. But it's finding support at the rising 50 weekly moving average. It's not a bad look, you know. Um, it's still a bull trend. I mean, granted, 20 is kind of crawling up. How do you, ex what do you expect when the price just kind of go like down straight for like 12 weeks? The, the 20 is going to pump down, but the 20 is still way separated from the 50, 20 about 50, about 100 bull trend. Started not long ago. Um, objectively, this is a bull trend, right? If you, I, I want to look at what the two week Ichimoku cloud here, I haven't looked at it yet. Okay, so not much to look at here. What about this? Um, it's just inside the cloud, just consolidating. Again, the top of the um, two week Ichimoku cloud, around five bucks, right? All everything is kind of lining up together. If it gets sucked over, you know, upwards, it's going to go to like five dollars most likely. If you look at the Supiichi cloud on a two week, it might give you a little bit more clear picture over here, isn't it? Got rejected from the top of the Supiichi cloud. Come back down. Is it going to go all the way down to like one fifty? Once, one, you know, I'm not sure. It doesn't seem like it wants to hit the bottom of the clouds. Forming a little bit of the trees over here. It looks like it's wanting to like, hey, you know, I don't want to go down anymore. Looks like it's finding some support over here at this volume shelf, right? So I don't necessarily think it's going to go down all the way down here, but although it does go down, pretty strong support over here. Always think about the downside, right? Bottom of the cloud, possible. Does it bother me? No. Volume's down. I don't care. Um, it could go down, though. If it does, next thing you know, top of the Subishi cloud, again, right? If it breaks through, Top of volume, no, sorry, bottom of the volume show right here around five bucks. I, I think that the downside right now is more limited and the upside tend to be higher if you are wondering about the risk reward ratio kind of thing. Man, thank you so much for staying in for like over an hour.